Well, 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 what's up guys, I'm back. And 52 weeks ago, today, I was in this exact location, in this exact outfit, um, starting vlog season one uh, of this journey, living in Boston, in Cambridge, on Harvard's campus, right here. Fun fact, Harvard next year is gonna be completely online. They're suing the government because um, basically international students who have universities that are completely online they can't be in the US during this time so uh, <laughs> I guess um, starting August or September uh, the first semester you know this camp is gonna be pretty much empty anyways but um, this is where we'd all begin vlog season one season one of the vlog and uh, we've come full circle here we are again today uh, life has changed a little bit I've got, you know, a new watch, I got a new necklace, I got a new tattoo, I don't know if you can see it, I got the Sperry's on, um, so those are some upgrades to my life, but um, we're about to finish, close the first chapter of my career um, out here in Boston, uh, post-graduation. Anyways, guys, if you're here for the ride, for the finale to the story, here is the last parting words of advice that I have um, that can be useful to you that ends that concludes this chapter in the vlog season in the story that um, is my life and is my contribution to society okay I was really trying to think of what can I say right now at 23 if I were to you know not exist tomorrow if I got coronavirus and I you know passed away God forbid um, what could I say today that would leave behind my legacy or leave behind something for you that could change your life indefinitely even if I've gone okay that's what I wanted to impart in this conclusion to vlog season one um, and I've thought about it and my guide is what I came up with this is what I came up with this core tenant um, besides the good life movement you know first pillar in the good life movement get rich okay this tenant I'm concluding it here with this guide this is everything you need to know in order to become wealthy not just for your life but for generations to come okay this is the 360 model to become financially free time free and generationally wealthy okay <sighs> all right guys so the first step, all right? We're just gonna jump right into it because this is everything that you need to know, all right? The first step to financial freedom is getting financial freedom, right? Is getting the financial independence. And uh, how do you do that? Well, there's tools that you use. You use budgeting, saving, and investing, okay? So, Budgeting and saving kind of go together, all right? So basically you have saving and investing, um, which is what it really comes down to. Budgeting is how you save, all right? So there's just two tools you, you really need to know, right? Saving and investing, okay? Saving is the defensive strategy to becoming wealthy. Basically, you don't want to, you want to cut your losses. You want to eliminate your losses, all right? So that means that if you're wasting your money on liabilities, like I said, law one, then you're not saving up. You're losing money, okay? You're you're throwing your money down a well, all right? You want to save, so you want to get the best deals on everything. You don't want to splurge. You don't want to spend recklessly, um, and uh, you you don't want to you know run yourself out of money, okay? But like I said, this is a defensive strategy. You want to save, but that should not be your ideal thing. You want to save around 10% of your income regardless okay no matter what you you do you should always have six month runway um, of living expenses and save 10 percent of your income no matter what no matter what point you are in your career that being said all right the second tool is investing okay and my investment strategy is value investments okay I've I follow Warren Buffett's lead okay I do value investments and the one thing you need to know about investing my investing strategy which is how I got in four years I quadrupled my money okay is this one thought all right and that is if a stock is going to last for 20 years 
it's a buy no matter what price it is if it's gonna last for 20 years just buy it today don't touch it for 20 years in 20 years it'll be more valuable okay why is that It's because in the long term the market goes up all right it's complicated but all right if you don't want to understand all of this you know woohoo business all right just go to Robin Hood buy the S&P 500 and um, 20 years from now sell that share okay that's you'll make money all right that, that's simple all right okay that, that, that's if, if you don't want to understand everything behind it just do that and you'll make money I promise you okay um, but if you use those tools okay there's other concepts that you need to understand you know when it comes to money you know financial literacy okay you need to understand time value of money you need to understand compound interest okay these are the two most important concepts when it comes to money all right time value of money what does that mean it means that if I offered you a million dollars today and a million dollars next year which one would you take okay you might be tempted to say take it next year because you have this intuition that if you delay gratification you'll get a reward okay but the thing is that's not true okay you want to get that million dollars today cash in hand why because you can spend that million dollars in the stock market and get a 7% average return so at the end of this year you would have a million plus 7% of a million dollars okay but if you waited next year to get that million dollars you'll actually be a million minus 3% okay why why that 3% because of inflation all right so inflation devalues the value of money by 3% every year so if you have a million dollars in the bank today and that and you just left it there in that bank well, next year it's going to be three percent less valuable because a million dollars today does not mean a million dollars next year it means 999 whatever dollars next year <sighs> okay that's time value of money okay compound interest what does that mean that's the most important key to this philosophy right here compound interest it means that you know if I give you a dollar today and I let that dollar double every day all right I forgot you know maybe 60 days from now you'd be a millionaire all right if you just doubled it okay that's the that's the key to compound interest okay when you have a pool of something and that pool grows a little bit every day then eventually you'll have a mountain that's growing a little bit every day and it, if you have a mountain, if you have a pool that grows 1% every day, then that 1% becomes bigger, and then you have a pool that's 1% bigger, and then that pool gets bigger, and that pool gets a 1%. I don't know how to explain it in the simpler terms. But basically, if you just look at the graph, right, of comp compound interest, that, you know, just a little bit of effort every day adds up. to a lot okay it adds up just just that those little efforts consistent effort adds up every day and you know after a long time you know that's those small efforts have become huge all right I, I can't explain it in simpler, simpler terms but basically you need to understand compound interest you need to understand that concept down pat because that is the key to financial freedom <laughs> anyways uh this this is getting long so let's move on to step two time freedom um, let's get to it all right all right guys step two to the three-step plan in the financial freedom financial independence movement is time independence okay so once we've achieved financial freedom financial independence the next step is time independence and this really goes back to the philosophy of the four-hour work week. Um, that's where all these ideas will come from. But essentially, once we have our financial kind of layer established, and you know we're working a full-time job, or we have a business that's succeeding, it's a found product market fit, and um, it's reliable income that comes in every week or every month whatever time scale you're on once we've gotten that step which is the hardest step by the way now we can focus on 
letting go of the machine. So we've built up a machine as well oiled as running on its own. Now we can step back from it and all we have to do is maintain it because we've already established it. So the four steps to time independence is called uh, deal. That's what um, four hour work we call it's delegate, eliminate, automate, and liberate. I think that's what it was. But essentially, the idea is we want to automate everything that we've built. Okay, once we've established everything, once we've gotten it down to a routine and it can be rhythmically done, we want to automate it. And we want to hand it off. We want to basically let someone else steer the wheel. Now that we've kind of piloted everything in the right direction, all they have to do is maintain the work that you've done. In the context of a business, that means that once you have it established and you're you know, the founder, owner, CEO, that's when you give the reins to someone else. That's when you kind of retire from your role as CEO and let someone else take the reins, let someone else handle the business, and now you own the business and you let the profit come in. That can be a hard step if, you know, especially if you think of your business as like your sole purpose, your everything. But the truth is that by letting it go, by letting someone else um, who's qualified to do this, who can understand your vision, um, take the reins and carry it forward for you, um, that's when you can free yourself to do more things. So um, that's ultimately the step which will allow you both be financially free and time free and that's when you are completely um, you know free that's like the height of freedom for yourself that completes the enlightened selfishness model um, at least you know for yourself next step which is generational wealth that happens at the last level um, and we'll get into that in a second but okay how do we delegate eliminate automate and liberate well, or location freedom. So basically, you have the business, you know, the four hour work week business. You've built out the company or your product. Um, that's where you delegate it, as in hire virtual assistants. Um, you train people under you to, um, you know, learn how you do things and uh, you let them do it. And uh, that's delegating, okay? That's so when you give people. Um, the responsibility that you used to take on. Um, automating is the other big thing. Automating is by using systems, okay? You use technology, you use um, software, you use uh, machines to do the rhythmic tasks, to do the repetitive tasks that you can do um, having learned how to do something um, maybe a few hours practice, uh, you can do it, you know, down pat. So these are kind of the things that go into, uh, you know, logistics or, um, you know, menial things. These are things that can easily be handed off to a computer, a robot, um, software engineer, uh, and they can handle that. That's what you want to do. It's an investment to automate things, but after it's automated, that's when you can, you know, be worry-free, let go. You don't have to think about it. Eliminate is you eliminate all the kind of superfluous tasks. You don't want all the random things to be bothering you. If you have, you know, three products that you sell on your e-store, for example, and only, you know, one of them brings in 90% of the business, forget the other two. They don't matter. They, they don't bring much value to your business. Focus on the thing that's giving you the lion's share of your um, wealth, and that's eliminating everything. So you just want to bring it down and boil it down to the very basics and only get the stuff that's you know producing results. You have to be ruthless with this. I know you might have some product that you have sentimental value about but this is business and business is war and you can't be sentimental about it. You have to be ruthless about it and that's capitalism for you but it's, it's, it is what it is. Liberate, okay, so you don't want to be location dependent. You don't want to be um, locked in a specific area. If you have to be um, you know, in one area to do business deals, then you can't be in Japan, for example, you know, climbing Mount Nagasaki or whatever, or like in Rome, visiting Italy, because you have to be in one location. 
by being location independent, being able to be work remote, being able to have video conference, Zoom conference, um, and especially this time in uh, you know in the Zoom age, uh, that's even more realistic to be able to work remotely. Um, you want to be liberated from location. You don't want to be tied to a specific location. That will grant you the most time independence. Okay, so deal, delegate, eliminate, automate, and liberate. Those are the four steps to time independence. All right, so let's get to generational wealth, the last step to the financial guide. Let's get to it. All right, guys, here we are, the third and final step to financial independence. All right, this is the last step, generational wealth, okay? At this stage, okay, it's probably been 20 years in your lifetime. Um, you might be 40, 50, 60, uh, but at this age, at this point in your career, your financial career, you've achieved time independence, financial independence, you know, you can do whatever you want, you can travel the world, you can um, live a full and rich life, okay? And basically, you've achieved, uh, you know, the selfish part of your life, and now it's time to give back um, to your family, and uh, ideally to, um, you know, other people in life as well okay so at this point you want to achieve wealth that transcends your life and that can get passed down to the generations to follow um, especially for your family uh, the dynasty if you want to create um, if you want to be like the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers or um, the Kennedys uh, even the Trumps um, this is what you have to do and what it comes down to and honestly uh, these kind of ideas you know they're public but they're held close to the chest because they don't want everybody to um, be using the strategy that increases competition for everybody but um, you know it is what it is um, the secret to generational wealth is land okay land I say that one more time land 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 okay real estate is how you make generational wealth because if you control the land you control the terms okay and if you control the terms you can control how the system works okay this goes layers and layers and layers all right basically if you own prime real estate okay land doesn't go away land lasts thousands of years okay a product loses a relevancy a um, you know informational course expires pretty soon food expires even though everybody needs it you know um, gasoline is useful but the you know renewable energy comes and goes you know and takes over the industry but land will always be necessary everybody needs a place to live no matter um, who you are or what time in history um, that you're in and that's why land is the secret to generational wealth because land lasts thousands of years okay it lands for generations it lasts for generations no other product lasts the way that land does okay with that said okay so now that you have financial independence and time in independence now you need to find real estate and uh, real estate the important thing about that is being at the connection of things okay how do you choose best real estate the best real estate is where the most opportunity happens okay you have to be able to identify places that are up and coming and you also have to be able to identify where is the intersection of life okay where does stuff happen okay that's what's in demand that's what makes real estate valuable is because it's in a convenient location and a convenient location is one where everything is around it if you think of a map or if you think of a graph right there's a node and there's satellites or other nodes that connect to it okay the best real estate is that node in the graph where everything connects to it if you want to get to from point a to point c you have to get to point b okay you want to get point b because a and c are connected to it every if you want to get from here to there you have to go through here like if that's owning the terms because now when people step onto your property they're on your terms 
people have something now you have something that people want okay um, you know if you saw the founder McDonald's right McDonald's became an empire not because they were a great restaurant though they were but because it became a real estate empire okay they owned the places where everybody was going to be and so everybody came to McDonald's to eat food okay real estate is the secret to generational wealth and you know I've given you the blueprint of choosing the right real estate okay how do you do it okay well now that you've have you've used the tools of financial freedom and you have the wealth built up at this point in your life um, that's when you consolidate real estate okay you want continuous space you want as much space as possible in the most relevant areas as possible and and basically you build the empire you get recurring income you you follow the blueprint the blueprint of Grant Cardone okay um, you want to buy multiplexes and you want to rent them out and you want to delegate automate everything like that okay that brings you a stream of income that's continuous okay and then you know there's a lot of videos that go into real estate and how to manage it so I'm not going to go into that but the core idea here is that once you've established yourself uh, you know your financial independence and your time independence your freedom and then you pivot towards now amassing real estate that's when you've locked in everything okay because your independence and freedom that can go away but once you have the land once you own it and the, the debts are all paid and you know your time has passed all of that is still in your name okay and that lasts so that is the you know final idea to the guide okay I know I didn't go super specific in terms of that but you know that's the idea if you can think it if you can think for yourself about it and how to you know finish out the idea then you'll be able to achieve you know the steps in the plan but anyways guys if you learn anything or entertained today drop me a like leave me a comment um, uh, drop and uh, subscribe um, you know it's kinda surreal that it's been a year uh, in this um, vlogging situation in Boston doing all of this wearing the exact same fit but you know life has upgrades and life has changed and I've changed and um, you know here we are uh, in the corona era uh, maybe soon to be post corona era um, but yeah guys uh, those are the ideas that you know I can say at this age of 23 that can change your life today if you um, kind of digest them and really think about them and um, implement them into your own life but um, anyways guys it's been one hell of a journey thank you for um, sticking with me this entire year in Boston it's been a struggle it's been a story it's been a life it's been a ride so um, stay tuned for the rewind uh, to come next week but uh, 52 vlogs straight hell yeah bro I'll see you in season two as always I love you guys and I'll see you next Thursday for the last part of season one. Peace. Yeah, yeah, I'm wasted. And I feel like I don't got a place here. Everybody just trying to make it. All these damn feels got me frustrated. Yeah, we got places to be. I'm just trying to make it out in one piece. Maybe I'm just not cut out for these streets. I'm going to be the greatest man you ever seen. Man